Hello developers! My name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how to convert a jhipster application to use Spring Native with GraalVM in startup in milliseconds. Let's giddy up! This screencast is based on a blog post that I published back in March and recently updated in April called Introducing Spring Native for jhipster serverless full stack made easy and if you click on this github icon it'll take you to a repo on github called auth0 full stack java example so this is a previous example that i posted on an auth0 blog and i've taken it and converted it for this blog post and if you click on the raw button here it'll give you a nice ascii doctor look and feel i have an ascii doctor plugin here that makes it easy to toggle on and off and so again we're going to convert a jhipster app that already exists to use Spring Native, and instead of starting in seconds on the JVM using native GraalVM binary, you can start in milliseconds. So let's giddy up. We're gonna need Node 14, Java 17 with GraalVM, and Docker Compose. And if you're on Windows, you may need to install the Windows subsystem for Linux, or if you're a savvy Windows developer, you can probably figure out what the commands need to be. And so this is all based on work that Josh Long and I did back in September 2021, as well as December 2021, where we basically you know, took a bunch of jhipster apps, modified them so they would work with GraalVM, and then we took those findings and turned it into the jhipster native blueprint. So you can find that on GitHub at jhipster generator jhipster native. And a lot of this work was done by Marcelo Shima. He's a very prolific developer that just does amazing things on jhipster. He made it, so all you need to do is you know, install this blueprint and then generate an app and then you can build it. And I did want to point out that this is in the Spring Native branch demo-native.adoc if you want to follow along with these instructions yourself. So let's do that by cloning this GitHub repo here. This is you know a previous jhipster app I created so if you want to see how I created it please go to the Auth0 blog and read all about it. And we'll start by cloning the repo. I'm going to do this in my downloads directory into jhipster native. So I am on a, a Mac M1 Max and GraalVM 2.2.1 just came out so it works on the M1. Before that it didn't work so things will be fast when I build it which is quite nice. And then we'll install jhipster 781 and the jhipster native blueprint. Now back to our instructions here. We're going to remove all the existing project files and regenerate them. And that's because the jhipster native is more of a when you start your application rather than a module, which is something that jhipster uses to modify the existing behavior of an application. So we're, uh, we're in this jhipster native directory. We'll start with rm-rf star. So there's nothing in there now, but neat trick is there's still a bunch of dot files in there. So there's this .urc json which has all the jhipster settings for this application and there's also a .jhipster directory which contains all the entities for this application so we can uh, run jhipster native with entities so that'll use those entities that we've already created and there is no caching support currently in spring native so that's why we disable the cache provider here and no enable hibernate cache you can see that only took you know a minute and 20 seconds so pretty fast in this m1 of course how long it takes will depend on your hardware your internet speed all that kind of stuff in the previous tutorial on the auth0 blog i basically created a photo gallery or a Flickr 2 clone as i like to call it and what it does is it basically allows you to upload photos, but then it reads the data from the photos so you don't have to enter in height width, you know, where it was taken, all that kind of stuff, and what data was taken on. So we're going to restore that behavior because we just wiped out all the customized code that we did in this jhipster app. So these git checkout commands will restore the modifications that we made for the most part. And then we're going to need to make a few other modifications. So I'm going to open up IntelliJ for that. Once that's loaded, you can look in the commit window and see all the files that have changed. Well, we only re need to restore the behavior in a few of them because those are the only ones I customized. The other files that changed are probably because it's a newer version of jhipster that's being used. We can actually you know, compare here and see that the old version is 7.3.1 and now we're at 7.8.1. The first thing is to modify the application dev just because I didn't want to have fake data 
when you first loaded up the app. So we're restoring Faker there, All right? Same as these instructions on the left. And then in palm.xml, we're going to want to restore the library for Drew Noakes image parsing. So if we just scroll down here, it's way down at the bottom. There we are. We'll take that one. And you'll see it actually added a number of dependencies, right? For Spring Native, uh, that's actually the only one. The other ones are just JHipster changes. So that's Spring Native that got added. And then we'll need to modify the Create Photo and Photo Resource. So again, if we look at the Commit window and go down to Photo Resource, or go up to Photo Resource, and we're going to want to restore this behavior of setting the photo's metadata. And you'll see the signature changed there a bit, so we'll go ahead and leave that as well. And then we do need to change, um, because the signature did change for exception in jhipster, we're going to have to add a few more here. And we'll also want those imports, right? So restore those imports. Then we have that, and then we can add this method here. And all the other changes in this file were made by the jhipster native plugin to add IDs to path variables or names to path variables. And then we'll need to install the React libraries that I added in the previous tutorial. So in the previous one, I did use React Photo Gallery. That one doesn't work with React 17, so I changed to use React Photo Album, and we do need to make some changes there. So if we open up this Photo TSX, go back to the project view, Instead of importing the gallery code, we'll want to import the photo album code. So that's this right here. And then instead of gallery, again, photo album. So search for gallery. And then just replace it. And everything else works without any code changes. So that's pretty slick. You know, good for React components. And then in photospec.ts, there's a Cypress test that will fail. Um, so we want to look for height and then remove these three or these four. And then for the Flickr 2 app, uh, that made a, a bunch of modifications or the jhipster native one did to add all of these native hints for various classes that are being used in this application. This is for micrometer. This is actually for JPA, surprisingly, and then a bunch of liquid based classes. And then these are the ones we need for Drew Noakes library. And how I discovered these was basically by, uh, you know, building the app, running it, seeing the error. So uh, it's kind of painful to do, but happily or nicely I did it for you. And then you'll need to reload your Maven changes here to get those Drew Noakes libraries to import properly. And then this native hint right here loads all the car sets or char sets, however you like to say it, because without it, you'll get this exception when you try to upload a photo. Okay, and so now you can install... Uh, Grawl VM, so grab this and you'll need SDK man. So if you go to sdkman.io, you can install it. And I have it installed here. I can do SDK version and then I can do SDK list Java. And you'll see I already have Grawl VM installed, local only, and uh, it says it's installed right here. So um, what I can do, let's see if it's the default version, Java version here. Doesn't look like it. So um, SDK install Java and it should it's already installed so SDK default Java and now we're using that version all right so all looks good there and then we can use Maven to build the project so MVNW package P native profile prod and then skip the test and this is because spring native doesn't support Makito yet so it might in the future but at this point in time it does not and while that's building, I can show you how jhipster by default when you choose OAuth for authentication uses key cloak. So if we were to look at source main uh, docker key cloak, you'll see how it uses docker compose to pull in uh, key cloak 610 at the time of this writing. And then, you know, it imports uh, existing realms and users for jhipster. So credentials and apps are already set up so you don't have to do any work and that just makes it easier for everyone right and if you want to you know run it and have access outside a local host you might need to tweak these ports right here so you can start key cloak up but one thing i want to let you know on the m1 is it doesn't work by default so i actually have a uh, a script that i use 
uh, called Build Keycloak Docker. And you set the version right here. I found this on Stack Overflow. So if you search for like, you know, M1 Max and, you know, Keycloak and why doesn't it work, you'll find this instructions. It basically clones, you know, Keycloak containers, goes into the server. And then what this does is it builds a local Keycloak image on the M1 that uses, you know, ARM64. AMD 64, I think it's ARM 64. And so then, you know, it'll actually work in startup. So even though if you don't do this, what happens is you'll start up Keycloak, it just won't work. It looks like it should work, but it won't. So uh, that's why I did it that way. And then I have an alias called run that actually runs this command that starts all the Docker containers that will be needed by this application. So I'm gonna run that and that'll start up Keycloak and Postgres. Since we're running in production, we'll need Postgres. And if you weren't running with a production profile, it would just use H2. And so that's what jhipster has configured. So you'll see that took about two minutes and 20 seconds to complete. If you were on an Intel MacBook or Linux, times may vary, right? Could be up to four minutes. I'm not sure, but I have noticed that the M1 is twice as fast as other Intel Macs. So that's pretty nice. We'll exit out of this one and clear up here and make sure that Keycloak and Postgres are running. And now we can get off to the races with Target Native Executable. That's the name of it. And you'll see, wow, that started in, you know, a second, right? Or 1036 milliseconds. So let's, let's try canceling it. Sometimes it takes Control-C a couple times. And now we're down to 508 milliseconds. Try it one more time, see if we can get a little faster. 553. So it's about a half a second, which is pretty awesome. Then if we click on, you know, localhost 8080 here, we can sign in. It'll take us to Keycloak. We're in where we're all signed in. And Chrome doesn't like I'm using admin admin, which is smart. Thanks, Chrome. Appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you were to look at the whole app, you could see there's entities in here. And you could, you know, add a new photo. You'll see that the uh, photos are hidden, right, by default. So put up the old 66 bus. His name is Hefe. And save it. And boom. Now it's in there, right? He sure is pretty. All right, so that's all working. And now I'd like to show you how to use Okta. So with Okta, you can just use the Okta CLI and install it from cli.okta.com. And then you can run Okta apps create jhipster. Ask for the name, I'll just say jhipster native, accept the default callbacks or redirect URIs. Creates a new application and creates the role admin and role user group, which jhipster expects and then adds those to a group's claim. So when you log in, it actually has those role admin and role users assigned to your user through OIDC. And now we can just source that file. And again, target native executable. Takes a little longer because it does have to make a network hop, right, out to connect to Okta just to get the issuer. But then if we sign in, boom, we're going to Okta for login now, which is pretty slick and all of our data should be there, right? And then the last one is, well, what if we wanted to use Auth0? So these are the instructions for, you know, Okta apps create jhipster, and then you source the okta.env. If you are on Windows and you're just using the regular command line, um, you'll want to change the values in this file to use, or the lines in this file to set instead of export. So let me just clear that. And then We'll cat the file so you can see it says export, spring security, OAuth, all that. So just change those to set and then rename it to octa.bat and run it and it'll set all those environment variables for you. And then make sure to add, you know, star.env to your git ignore so you don't check in your client secrets. And you can do something very similar with Auth0. It does take a bit more work and so you'll see here there's, a, there's nine steps, right? So you log in, you create an application, you add those callback URLs, you uh, set up roles, set up users, set up uh, this system to actually add your roles to the ID token and access token. And then you have to, uh, you know, this just explains that that's using a custom prefix that jhipster recognizes. So what I would encourage you to do is go to this issue for the Auth0 CLI and let's make it as easy as it is for Okta. And down here at the bottom, there's some votes. So we're up to 19. Appreciate it if you vote for that. And uh, We'll get that fixed. So I already have that set up, and so I can do uh, copying from a different or the original project, auth0.env right here, source it, and then run it. Now, if we were to try to log in, goes to auth0, and as long as I remember my credentials, 
I should be able to log in. Or I could even use Google since I've already set that up. And that logs me in. And then of course I can see my data. So it works with Keycloak, Okta, and Auth0. And so, you know, this is just showing those instructions that I used. And then these are some numbers that I had before I actually, you know, used the M1. So in JVM mode, if you start this app, it takes about four seconds. As far as build time goes, this is on uh, my Intel. It took three minutes, 15 seconds. So here it was two minutes, 20 seconds. And then if I use Docker, it took quite a bit longer. So I don't know if I'd recommend that. Uh, the amount of memory after starting is 178 megs, and then the amount of memory used after running npm e2e, which does Cypress tests, is 211 megs. And then here's the command I used to find that out. And then the M1, uh, this was without Camtasia running, right, recording my screen, uh, 1 minute 49 seconds to actually build the binary. Uh, it starts in 433, so a bit faster, and as you saw today, um, you know, Camtasia did slow that down a good 100 milliseconds or so. Um, and then the memory is a little more on the M1. Should you use GraalVM instead of the JVM? I think it makes sense if your Java apps are super fast and you just want to operate them in a serverless environment and, you know, do it that way. But if you actually want to run, you know, for days and weeks and stuff like that, uh, you know, the JVM is built for that and it optimizes over time. So, you know, running on the JVM is probably good enough. So this is a tweet. If you wanted to go, you know, respond to it, there it is in response to people, you know, asking me about it. You can find the code on GitHub in the Spring Native branch. That's uh, github.com, octadev, auth0 full stack Java example in that Spring Native branch. And then the blog post itself is introducing Spring Native for jhipster. Thanks for watching today. I really appreciate you taking the time and learning about jhipster native. If you want to find me, I'm on Twitter at mrabel. My team is at Octadev on Twitter, and you can also go to twitter.com slash auth0 if you want to follow them. Our YouTube channel is at youtube.com slash Octadev. So subscribe and come back for more awesome Java content. Cheers.